Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be with you here in wonderful Berlin. Maybe you could begin with a brief introduction to your film. For people who don't know anything about it, what can they expect? Hi, my name is Leandro Koch. I'm one of the directors of the Klesmer Project. This is a, not a documentary, but a hybrid film on Klesmer music, on cultural heritage. It is also a love story. It's a road movie. It's a lot of things. And can you tell us a bit about the, the genesis of the project? Because it's such an innovative and unique film that's come out at the end, but where did it all begin? And, and what did you originally have in mind? Um, we originally have in mind to make a Klesmer documentary film, like to get Klesmer bands and show the, what is the actual scene of Klesmer. And what we found out during the investigation what, was that um, Klesmer meant also the Yiddish culture and the Yiddish culture was disappearing. Yeah. And so we started to think about why was that uh, vanishing culture. And so we found out that it was something that we found more, more interesting to, to think about, which was why, why is it disappearing? And why, where, is that, where are the remains of this culture? Mm. And the remains are in Eastern Europe, in the places where the Jews used to live with their neighbors, and that the neighbors still remember the melodies of the Jewish weddings. And so we really began a, this road trip, trying mm. to find the last remains of Klesma music. And it's also a way of showing uh, the, all the different places where Klesma can be present, which are really different and really different to the sound that we know about it. Mm. And I guess you didn't know just what journey you were going to go on when you embarked on this project and all the different uh, countries you would visit. So can you just give us a bit of a flavour of what period of time this, this, this you know, unfolded over and, and you know, the editing process, you know, how did you get to this final product? Okay, first uh, I will talk about the places and then I give yeah. it to Leandro to talk about the editing. Mm. Um, places where, like we always knew it was Eastern Europe at some point because it's the core of, of the music. But then um, we found out like the, the best place we wanted was in the borders of the three countries like Romania, Moldova and Ukraine, where it was, uh, there used to be a border that kept moving all the time. So the culture that you find there, it's quite, uh, uh, had gone with history culturally because there seems to be no borders there, although they are definitely are. And so we find it really interesting to go into these cultures that are so mixed and that are so different and so many languages in the same villages because of the history the village has. Mm. Uh, so the places were mostly uh, picking up by us. Uh, for this mix, mixing culture that we find it so interesting. Mm. Yeah, the process was really long. It started uh, seven, almost seven years ago with the research trip we did in, the, in that region. Uh, then we wrote a script for about a year. We developed the project. Mm. Then it was like the fundraising of the project. Then we were ready to film the project and the pandemic came. Mm. And we had to come back to home to Buenos Aires. And then in 2021, finally, we, we could make it to, <clears throat> to, film, to film it. And then it was like a one year and three months of editing, a long mm. editing, because we came back with more than 200 hours of footage and uh, other uh, kind, uh, another few hours of uh, 60 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it was a really long time editing, but uh, in the end, it was like a seven years to the whole process wow. to, to get here. And coming to the form of it, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, did you take inspiration from any other filmmakers or where did you get this idea to kind of have this hybrid of documentary and fiction and kind of the, the meta fiction or the meta narrative, you know, which is just super unique and, and really amazing? Yeah, of course, we have uh, inspiration from other films. Uh, there is a, a, a few, uh, how do you say, uh, yeah, um, a few directors that we love and mm. that, that made the uh, movies that inspired us. One of it, one of these is uh, Miguel Gomez, mm. who made a, f a Portuguese director who made a film called Aquel Querido Mes de Agosto, Our Beloved Month of August, 
that is uh, <clears throat> a documentary on music that has a fictional plot in it. Mm. And it really inspired us, but there's, there are another director, uh, Ross McKelvey, who made the uh, Sherman's March. Um, I don't know who other, Alan Berliner was an inspiration for us also, the way he portrayed his uh, family, his, uh, his father and his uh, uncle. Uh, I don't know, maybe for you it's another one. Yeah, no, we also saw a lot of Ag Agnes Varda in one portrait of him, <coughs> people, mm. and and then we started thinking about how to, because uh, the movie had made a lot of people not, not had worked a lot with not, not actors, mm -hmm. as, as we, like we are in the front and we are not actors. And so we had to really think about, uh, about how to direct people that are not actors. Mm -hmm. um, so we also watched lots of uh, other documentaries, just thinking about this, thinking about how they may I talk to people when asking things to do in front of a camera, which is really difficult when you are not an actor. Yeah. Um, and I, I you, there was another part of the question. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, nice. yeah, I know, I know. But in <laughs> the end, no, because you, you asked how was it that we could make like these meta narrative things mm. and so many layers, and that was like, from the first part of the movie, we knew that we are we were one going to make a hybrid or something mm. that was not going to be just a documentary film, and that is why we kept on uh, writing scripts before going mm. on shooting. Like we really made uh, six different endings to the film, and we kept the the script open all the time and mm. thinking about it and everything, and then when it came to editing part, we find the other narrative uh, layers. And it was something that uh, the movie kept on changing itself until mm. the very last part of the editing. Mm. Um, we were writing until uh, last week. We were just uh, finishing things on the voiceover mm. or trying to find out some things about the, the Yiddish tale we we use as a counterpoint of our story. Can I add something? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Actually, in the, in, the, in, the, in the very beginning of the film, it w the, this was a documentary on klezmer music. There was no mm. hybrid story. But the, uh, it was Paloma's idea to make a documentary on klezmer music, and I really didn't like that music, but I liked the idea of spending time with her doing mm. a, a project. So I said yes. But then we thought, Okay, maybe that's a good story. A guy doing, a, you know, the actual facts of, of our film. So that's when the hybrid entered to, mm -hmm. the, to the movie. And that's when the, the door of the multi-layer uh, storytelling appeared. And that's, that, that was like the, the starting point. Mm. And is it fun somehow, I guess, to have that slightly <laughs> playful and creative attitude towards documentary? Because... I guess if you, you know, you can just do it very straight and, and perhaps, you know, just be educational mm -hmm. in, in the way that you're trying to reveal your subject, whereas mm -hmm. maybe it makes it kind of more accessible. You, you can broaden yeah. your audience yeah. by having this kind of fun aspect to it. Yeah, of course. And there's also another thing that we have thought about a lot, which is um, the thing about giving answers through a film, that we find it much more interesting to give the possibility of making questions and at some point, um, although of course we we really uh, make the research and we make uh, some statements of the film and everything, like we have always tried not to be like so explicit about the themes, but to to try to make the spectator come with us to what we thought and what we thought uh, it was interesting for us while doing the research, mm. which is. Okay, we have all these elements. Mm -hmm. We are asking ourselves why is it that Yiddish culture disappear? Mm -hmm. And these are the elements that we found during our research. But these are not the answers. Mm -hmm. These are just like many elements that just keep opening questions. And for us, it, th this was really interesting about how to treat the documentary form mm -hmm. and how to treat all the documentary elements in a way that. Um, it can open more doors to people to ask themselves or to talk about what they think about uh, what can, could have happened, mm. but not going out of the 
film theater with the answers or mm. anything. And we really try to make it work in that way. Mm. <coughs> well, 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 oh, sorry, sorry one more thing. When we came back uh, from the from the shooting, we had a tons of material, and we were really uh, tempted. It's mm -hmm. okay, tempted <laughs> with the idea of doing a. Um, Observation, observational documentary, you know, mm. just portraying characters. We had lots of material that we loved, but, you know, we thought that uh, to, to make this theme uh, universal, we really mm. needed to, to create a fictional plot for the spectator to, to want it to know more, you know, because uh, otherwise it would have been like a niche film, mm. and we didn't want that at all. Mm. So. I'm almost out of time, but, um, you know, the fact that, you know, it's kind of touching on what you said there, I mean, it's not, you know, um, hitting the points with a sledgehammer, but you, you are opening a bit of a Pandora's box in terms of, you know, I was entirely ignorant of this kind of um, quashing of, of the Yiddish culture mm -hmm. and, you know, how the formation of Israel <clears throat> happened and kind of created that division. Did you ever feel like you were treading on, you know, um, sort of con controversial ground, or was there any feeling of risk of, of kind of delving into the subject? Uh, you want to go? I mean, it's it's not at risk. I'm I sure there's going to be people that doesn't like what we state on the film, mm. but I all I'm also sure that that would have happened in any case. Um, there's just no way of. Uh, like telling something or making a political statement or something without having a rejection about people. It's just something we know. Mm. And it, it happens in every subject and it's okay. Like as long as we can talk about it, it's really okay. Of course, um, we, the, the things that we didn't say, it was because there are some things that we feel you cannot just talk it very lightly and it's not space in the movie to go like really deep into every theme you, you touch. Mm. So we did it in a way with our character, which is interpreted by Leandro. Mm. We did it in a way that we could talk about it um, through the, the book that he finds and through the people that he talks to. And, and again, it's like, okay, this is what the character is going through. Mm -hmm. And if we have to talk about it deeper. Of course, we can do it, but it's not in the, in the movie. We cannot ask it for so much, uh, so much things. We are dealing with li really lots of elements in the film, mm. and we found it really uh, important to to touch the things in a um, criticized way, way and in a, in a theoretical way. Uh, but also knowing like there, there are any subject that we touch has huge information to talk about and to read about and to think about. And we are not going really deep into it because <coughs> if not, uh, yeah, we wouldn't have got the time. Mm. Uh, in my opinion, if there is a, any controversy uh, after the film, it would be good, you know, because mm. people would be talking about this subject, which me personally, I didn't know before doing the film. Mm. I, I grew up mm. in a Jewish community and I never knew about this. Mm. And for me, it's really good that people get to at least make the, uh, the, the question, I'm sorry, mm. about this subject. So welcome to the, to the controversy. And just very quickly, what does it mean to you to have your film here in Berlin? And also, I guess you can say it's very much focused on this particular element of, of Jewish culture, but there are universal themes in there, you know, about identity and particularly in our era. You know, there's so much complexity and so much nuance. How do we define what it means to be Jewish or to be from Israel or to be British or to be Argentinian? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, there's never any straight answers. So, there's, you know, in that sense, a lot of people can relate to these ideas as well. Yeah. Being in Berlin for us, it's uh, really amazing. We're really happy. We always thought that this is the window that our, our movie needed, uh, the, the, the festival where it should be. So being here, it's really... It's really, it's really good for us. We're really happy. And regarding the, the other part of the question, for me, it's really hard to, to, to try to understand what a culture is. You know, it's a, mm. such a complex idea. I think we don't belong to one culture. 
in this globalization era, you belong to many cultures. You, you have co uh, things from one culture. Uh, I mean, I have things uh, I, I consider myself. Uh, the, 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 the most important culture for me is Argentinian. You know, mm -hmm. I'm Argentinian. But I also have things from the Jewish culture. I also have things from United States, because th they are everywhere. <laughs> it's like a globalization. Uh, so for me, it's really hard to try to think about this. But I think the movie tried to reflect on that. And that's mm -hmm. somehow interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and the importance of preserving that culture. Yeah, yeah of course. I think, and not letting things die, kind of thing. Yeah, no, and I, and I also think that uh, sometimes we really messed up in definitions about one, oneself, like as if we need to explain with words what uh, to define what we are. And in the end, it's more about what we do than what we think we can say about what we are. Mm. I really think that what, what defines us are our acts mm. more than our words in any sense. Mm. Very, very well put. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing thank all that with you. me. Can't yeah. wait for everyone else to see the film. Okay, Thanks a lot. Thank you Thanks for your time.